behind us. It would be logical to assume. Trap! D&D games have always interested me because I've played and loved the game of Dungeons and Dragons for many years. I remember when I first learned to play, my brothers and I played practically every day one summer. There are running jokes we still have to this day almost 20 years later that came there from those gaming sessions. I think that's what interests me in video game adaptations of D&D. Can it compare to sitting down at a table with friends, dice, books, Mountain Dew, and Funyuns? The short answer is no, probably not in most cases. While there are some really fun D&D video games out there, it can't compare to your own imagination and the personal interaction you experience. But the flip side of that is now that we're all older, have jobs and families of our own, it's hard to get together and game on a regular basis. So if you're looking to satisfy that dungeon delving feeling, and also want a bit of the social element, this may do the trick. Dungeons and Dragons Online, an MMORPG for PC. Ahead is the cellar where the Kanith crystal is hidden. Developed by Turbine, published by Atari, and released in 2006, when it came out, it was much in the style of EverQuest or World of Warcraft. Buy the game, pay a monthly subscription, and be on your merry adventuring way. Six years later, things are a bit different now. As of September 2009, DDO became subscription-free, mixing free-to-play and pay-to-play elements. So a good chunk of the game is actually available for nothing. Great for casual gaming, quick gaming sessions for a busy schedule, or someone who doesn't want to fork over money every month. As far as the game goes itself, you may be surprised by what it does have to offer, even for free. The game uses the Eberron campaign setting and 3rd edition rules. Go. DDO is an action RPG, meaning you'll move around and swing your sword yourself instead of targeting and auto-attacking. It also does a good job, in my opinion, of incorporating non-combat aspects of D&D, such as using skills like search and disable device, and the storytelling side with a dungeon master-like narration during your quests. Looking down at a corpse on the altar, the song sings, and you, dead hero of hate and blood, shall be the devourer's teeth. There's also a good bit of variety as far as character customization, almost as much as filling out a character sheet with paper and pencil. You want to be a halfling fighter with a great axe? Go for it. A dwarf bard with high charisma? Go nuts. So what's the verdict? Still can't compete with real life D&D, but like I said, that's hard to beat. As far as an MMO, you could definitely do worse considering the free price tag option. Graphically, crafting, and PvP system wise, DDO doesn't have a lot going for it. But it does for just about anything else, and it's certainly worth checking out. I had fun playing back in 2006 when it first came out, and I had fun playing it an hour ago in 2012. Maybe it's just a D&D label on it, but how many games made in the last six years can you say that about? <laughs>